Mobile World Congress is the annual event for the mobile or cellular telecommunications industry. It's held in Barcelona in Spain, which provides a beautiful backdrop for the event with its architecture, its art and all the visitor attractions. This year the event attracted a record 85,000 visitors who came from over 200 countries. The number of companies exhibiting this year also rose. There were over 1,800 and even though the exhibition had moved to the new Fira Gran Vía last year to provide more space, this year it had grown so much that it also took up space at the previous Fira Monjuque as well. Virtually all the big companies were present, along with a huge number of the smaller companies which provide many of the essential elements and building blocks to the industry. There were vast numbers of announcements, as would be expected. One of the first was from Nokia and was presented by the head of the devices division, Stephen Elop. Introducing the new Nokia X and the Nokia X Plus. There they are, ladies and gentlemen. The move to include Android in the Nokia X series came as a surprise to many because the Nokia Devices division is being acquired by Microsoft and their main operating system is Windows, of course. But it was stated that while they were using Android as the operating system in these phones, the upper layer and applications are orientated towards Microsoft and these would introduce users to the Microsoft mobile system. Needless to say, they are still focusing on their other lines for which there were launches as well. Apart from Nokia, virtually all the other phone manufacturers launched phones of all shapes and sizes. However, there is a lot more to Mobile One Congress than just phones. We talked to a number of industry experts to gain their views on what is happening in the industry. To me, Mobile World Congress is increasingly a digital World Congress. In the early years, when I used to come over 20 years ago, we used to see towers everywhere, but now it's more a question of where have all the towers gone? Clearly, there are many software companies, many special network companies, other companies providing billing and customer care, but there are solutions for the whole digital economy. So what about LTE? Where is it now and what's happening? So LTE is uh, definitely the topic uh, of uh, not only maturity, but also uh, uh, improvements. With uh, carry aggregation uh, uh, up to 300 megabit per second, performance is drastically, drastically enhanced. Uh, on top of it, LTE is uh, also invading uh, not only the smartphone and tablet, uh, connected tablet arena, but also the automotive world. As, uh, as a natural expansion of, uh, of, uh, of its performances. Uh, it's also entering the home with, uh, with uh, a set of small cells uh, allowing effectively to bring this connectivity to uh, the final user everywhere. But there are other issues like coverage, especially within buildings. Here at the show, lots of innovation going on, especially in our space, the in-building uh, market. 80% um, of mobile phone traffic is now emanating from within buildings. That's uh, driving a requirement for in-building systems, having to do a, a lot more innovation in the, 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 the DAS market, bringing intelligence into the DAS market, which is what we've been doing here at the show. Very exciting times. Radio coverage is very important, with macro cells and small cells being incorporated into networks. But it's the overall network concepts that need to be addressed as well. The wireless industry is growing. One of the things we have got consensus about is the relentless growth in data traffic. Unfortunately, there's less consensus about how we're going to solve that problem. Wi-Fi, small cells, LTE, 5G, Cloud RAN are all part of it, but nobody quite knows what the answer is going to be. And in addition to this, the transport networks require a huge investment how can these be made to pay for themselves? A key theme we see at Mobile World Congress is that customers actually, not only do they want to deploy next generation networks, but they want to make money out of them. They want to transform their business and unlock their network value to enable that. So things like Cloud Interconnect to enable their applications for their customers, um, providing mobile backhaul to enable their LTE rollout. So it's really that convergence of te enabling technology but making money out of it as well. But there are many other issues including connected cities, connected cars, and even cars that were not only wirelessly connected but wirelessly charged like this one. But people were also looking forwards to 5G. 
One of the interesting things about Mobile World Congress this year is that people are already looking forward to fifth generation technology. I think some of the challenges that will need to be solved there are things like higher frequencies, possibly up to millimeter waves, uh, advanced antenna systems solving issues like massive MIMO, lower latency and addressing the wide range of connected devices that will be necessary to support the Internet of Things. Unfortunately it was impossible to see everything in a gathering so large but I suppose we'll be able to look and see how things work out in the coming year before the next Mobile World Congress.